I am fading. My makeup is still going, but I'm fading. So I'm going to push through and film one more because I feel like I'm coming down with something like I'm, my house, they're sick and I think I'm catching it. So I want to make sure I get this filmed. Um, the Tom Ford stick makeup that I didn't want at $90, but at $45 looked a whole lot more appealing is what I'm wearing. And I have to admit, it kind of gets better with time. I don't like it the first hour, but I wanted to see how it filmed. And I think I'm kind of liking it, especially after a few hours, it looks really like smooth and flawless. But in the beginning, the first hour, it's pretty heavy and cakey like that I didn't like. But anyway, um, pistachio. I love pistachio. I have like an obsession for pistachio and there's a whole lot of pistachio fragrances, but I'm going to focus on some newer ones with nuts. So if you like pistachio fragrances and some other nuts, stay tuned for this. If you're new here, my name is Greta and I absolutely love perfumes and fragrances of all different styles. Um, and whether it be body lotions, body washes, or perfumes. I really like them a lot. I tend to lean into niches. If that's something that interests you and you're trying to find more perfumes to explore or you want to learn a little bit more about it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll get me in the feed and it really does help my channel a lot for you to hit that subscribe. Also double check that you are still subscribed. Sometimes Google likes to do this cleanup thing and they will unsubscribe you or if for some reason I got a surge of subscribers from a shout out or something, they will unsubscribe them again. So it's a weird thing. Just subscribe. Anyway, let's get in this. So I tried to stick to some newer stuff. I have some that I had tried that I really like, but I don't have the full bottle and I might not have the sample anymore. So I am skipping a couple like uh, Wilhelm Fr Faces of Francis. Really like that one a lot, but I don't have that sample. I think I maybe put it in someone's package like you know i i do sometimes i throw in other samples that i don't use anymore and i just want you to try it so i just throw it in your package when you make an order whatever but let's do some let me start with this one now this is a house that i i don't typically like and a lot of the times because of the performance for the price because of that i will never get pr from them i've already i guess i mean i said one fragrance i didn't like and that's all it takes i will never ever receive fragrance from them but honestly i don't care because i'm here for you not to say what they want to hear so that i can get on their little pr list and then you have to walk on glass to make sure that you always say something nice about them because i'm not here for that I can buy the fragrance. I have no problem. I have the resources. If I like something, I'll buy it with my own money. I don't need to receive the PR. I enjoy working with brands that don't mind if I say I don't like something. And I'll even tell them like, yeah, I got it. I just didn't care for it much. I mean, I'm not here to be mean to them or be ungrateful for a gift, but I'm also not going to say something to be ultra kind if I don't like it. If I don't like it, I don't like it. I try to be professional and describe it for somebody that might like it, but I'm not going to, you know, walk on eggshells for brands. And um, some of them are a little more sensitive than others. But anyway, let's get into this one. Kayali Yum Pistachio. I do have the dapper version. Um, I do understand that the Kayali version opens more citrus, which is usually a sign of a higher quality more complex fragrance, which I would expect from that for the price point, whereas this jumps in right to the creamy pistachio. Now, I do find, however, that dappers can be more mass appealing than some fragrance than originals, and they also definitely have better performance and price point. I love this one. I've worn this a bunch. It's definitely a creamy vanilla um, pistachio, a little bit more like that gelato that it's supposed to be the Kayali. I can't tell you for sure what that one is, but I can tell you what this one is. 
and it is so delicious and cozy and I definitely get pistachio ice cream from this one. He definitely hones in on that melting kind of ice cream. It's not hard and cold. It is like it's been sitting out for 10 minutes and getting nice and soft or like a soft serve. No, it's melting. It's hard ice cream that is melting and it's so good and so cozy. Like this is one I absolutely love. Um, yeah, you can see, I mean, this is all me. Look how much I, oh man, I better get another one. I did not share this at all. So I think, um, uh, that's a good dent for me considering my collection. I had no idea I had used that much. It didn't click. So yeah, definitely a winner of this one. Now, another one that is a pistachio fragrance that is by a house that I don't typically care for their stuff. But when I heard pistachio, I mean, it was like you had me at pistachio. I'm willing to give them a shot. So Lucky Scent sent this to me. Thank you. Uh, and it's by Obvious Perfumes. Una Pistachio. Now, Obvious Perfumes, I mean, they're they're wonderfully ecologically sound kind of company. I did do a master class with them, which is where I got to try the whole house and learn about them. They use the most minimal amount of glass on their bottles. So it is very thin. You can see there's no heavy base. They use cork, which is weird because in wine, there's a shortage of cork, of natural cork. So I find it weird that they're using cork when even wine wineries are having issues with cork, right? Anyway, they have a cork cap over this. Um, wow, and they have the invisible straw in here, which is weird because I heard that for ecological reasons, they're not producing them anymore, which is weird. But they are high natural, but I find that obvious perfumes are very light and have very poor longevity, which is why I don't like them. They're somewhat solo floor kind of fragrances too. That's why they're all named by a note. But I personally didn't care for any of them when I did that masterclass, which is weird to not like any of them. The pistachio, I actually like. However, I'm going to go again and say I didn't really care for the performance on it. Love the smell, not the performance. It's definitely something that I would want to layer with. And I have something to layer with for you, but it smells really good. But again, the performance was like two hours, maybe, maybe. Very, very light. And again, more solo floor kind of. Okay, it opens very garden like. That has to be that carrot, but I'm getting a carrot in like you're just pulling out of the ground like i'm getting the greens of the carrot there's a very green initial smell on it that quickly evolves and i get then more of that creamy carrot like carrot juice has a milkiness to it and carrot is frequently used as poor man's iris now i don't remember how much these are. I think they're like 150 maybe or something. I just found personally that this brand in general was more, is overpriced for what they are. There is something good quality about them, but again, the performance is just not that for me. And then it, there is a freshness. There's something very um, clean about this pistachio fragrance. It is not a like gourmandy type of pistachio fragrance. It stays clean and translucent, crisp like. So it, it it's great as like a topper, maybe. It starts to get a creaminess, like a, a sandalwood musk kind of creaminess, but a very light kind of skin scent type of creaminess on your skin which I don't mind if I get a long wear of a skin scent that you can still kind of just catch on your skin if I'm staying home, but it's okay. it's okay. Like this is definitely, if I had to pick one from this house, it would be this one. But I'm not sure I would like paying that kind of money. I layered it with the pistachio cream. I did order this. Uh, did I get it from the website or Amazon? From the website. I have a link for both for either the website or Amazon. They have both. It's, I think it even comes from the same place. It comes from Santa Monica, California at the pistache. Uh, I got the perfume and the body cream. Now, if I layer this cream 
with this, it's a little bit better, but I really think it's because of this. This performs like a Sol de Janeiro kind of body butter. It has a really thick butter, much like Sol de Janeiro, and a lot of scent like the Sol de Janeiro creams do. Very highly fragranced. Um, I like this one a lot, and again, the price point is really good. I think it's like $42 this tub I will put down the pricing because I, I did it I fat I figured it all out for my Instagram and the pricing on here is really affordable in comparison to the same size tub for Sol de Janeiro however it is more expensive per ounce than say um than the hemp's creams which I don't know why people say are so overpriced because the hemp's creams come in 17 ounces giant pump size and they're always on sale they're actually really cheap per ounce. It's it's crazy to me that people are like, oh, this is not worth $20. It's like three times the size or like than any of the other ones. Like it's of course gonna be more expensive. But anyway, this is a really thick butter. I do like this cream. I do recommend this one. And it's really highly scented like a creamy pistachio, like a creamy pistachio ice cream is what I get on this one. And the scent does last. And it's pretty darn hydrating. It's not as hydrating as Sol de Janeiro, but it's really hydrating. I definitely think this one's worth it. And again, layers really nicely with these because this one would be nothing without that cream. I'm not gonna lie. I do like when a store sends me the perfumes because I never feel like they're taking it personally. Uh, Pisachis, I did get the EDP also. Oh, this was the $42. This is the $42 for 100 ml. I mean, $42. It's a very affordable fragrance. It smells like a very affordable fragrance. This does not smell expensive. However, for a cheapie, I really like it. I don't like their other their other products. I got everything from them and I had issues like the lip balm, lip oil was empty. The eye cream was empty and the eye cream was sealed. The lip balm was clearly used. It was really disgusting. I didn't like any of those products. I really liked the cream and, the, and this fragrance. I would stick to that. This is kind of like philosophy, is kind of, if I were to compare it to other brands, where it's a really nice, pleasant scent. It doesn't smell like expensive or complex or well-made. It's pretty linear. It's comforting. It's mass appealing. It's a good, a great price point. Per, I mean, like, this is pretty cheap for 100 ml. It's in that 50 cent range per ml, which is affordable to me. So I do like it for that. For a cheapie, I really like this one. And the longevity is not that great, but for that price point, I really don't mind. This one has more of a nutty kind of fragrance. It's a... Uh, more like pistachio pudding is what this smells like, or pistachio whipped cream, kind of. And I definitely get more of a vanilla kind of in here. Um, there's not a whole lot of texture to the fragrance. It doesn't have a lot of body, but it definitely has that scent. It doesn't push very much, but you'll be able to smell it if you have it sprayed all over. You definitely spray heavy with this to get some performance from it. Yeah, but the cream definitely helps on this one. So I do like this, the pistache, pistache, yeah. This is a great time for me to stop quick and say, tell me some of your favorite pistachio or other nuts that are kind of blended nuts um, that you're enjoying and tell me some of those down below. And then we have also that has pistachio amongst a lot of other stuff in it is the baklava royale. Now this is completely empty. I'm waiting for my restock. It's been circling around with the post office for a week. It hasn't really moved since they received it, so I'm a little worried, but I have restock on the way. Uh, this one, I wish I could spray it again. I know I featured this. Look, squirt. Yeah, opens very citrus, very vibrant citrus. And then quickly you get a honey nut kind of come up in here and you start to get like a bubbling up of this baklava kind of smell. But I have this really nice like orange lemon also. 
And then you have um, orange blossom that kind of breaks through it and gives it more of a floral aspect to the gourmand and breaks it up because baklava in itself is a very rich kind of food that is very dense and rich and probably not something that I want to wear as much as I love the smell and I love to eat it where she kept this more vibrant. And actually, this is one that grew on me with time. It wasn't like an instant wow with me. However, after like a week or two, and certainly like making all the decants and ha constantly spraying it for you all, I was like, you know, I think I kind of like that one actually a little more than I initially did. It's that because I love orange blossom and I know Gabby does too. And the way that orange blossom is mixed in there, it's really kind of pretty. It's really pretty and not overly gourmand as much as that nut, that like honey nut comes through. Very, very pretty. Yeah, I like this one. Baklava Royale. Now, if you do want your photorealistic baklava, that is going to be Orem by Zaharoff. And this is the same perfumer. Claude Deere is the one that works with Zaharoff. He always has. He's done all his perfumes. Claude Deere also did Narcotica Dolce Diablo, which is, again, a very photorealistic fragrance, heavy. Um, same style there. Very heavy, foodie, photorealistic. It may be so like for me, it's like I really love smelling that, but I don't want to smell like it. I don't want to wear it. It's too much for me. Where I would probably put this in that category again, where it is photorealistic baklava. It smells like it. He got that honey syrup down. You even smell like the doughy flakes in here. You're getting the nuts. He's got the pistachios and the walnuts. So like, don't argue what style, who created baklava first and which kind of nuts you're supposed to use because there are full on arguments about that. He's got it all in there. Oh, honey, oh my God, the honey. This like is a punch in the face, honey. This is, I know there are people looking for a true photorealistic baklava, and this is that one. I don't know about wearing it though, but I really like smelling this one. And it is more linear where you're getting that photorealistic baklava all throughout. So Aurum. And then as much as these bottles annoy me because the caps suck, by Born to Stand Out, happy nuts. This one opens boozy for sure. I get like a blast of rum. Doesn't last very long though. So if you're not into boozy, don't worry. Then the, the honey starts to come out. And then you get this pistachio, almond, vanilla kind of fragrance coming in with that booziness. And it starts to evolve and it turns into this super creamy kind of nutty pistachio almond vanilla. It really turns creamy, but more in like a sandalwood musk creamy tonka bean, like a very tonka forward kind of creaminess fragrance. Um, almost like if you took Mandorle by Soradora, very popular. Like if you took that and added a prominent pistachio to it, kind of. But it, there's a honey nut aspect to it also. Yeah, like the booze is gone already. A little bit of caramel rum in here too. But that rum is only for that first, like, I don't know, half hour, maybe 15, 30 minutes. Like it starts out strong rum and then that rum starts to kind of blend into it and all the other notes start popping up. But by an hour, the rum is just gone. You didn't even know it was ever there. But it turns into a very creamy honey nut, like a honey nut pudding or whipped cream. Like it's really cozy, very creamy. I like the happy nuts and it definitely evolves and changes, which I like in a perfume. I don't like it being too linear because I kind of get tired of them if they're going to be creative like this. I like it to change into something I can live with for hours that's very comfortable and a little more mass appealing like is how I like my bases. But yeah, this is, I really like the happy nuts. I got to admit, I really like this one. What else do I have? Revy. 
Mm, Brevi. Okay. Wow. Brevi is very different from these other ones. Brevi, there's something it opens very lemony, citrus, fresh. There's something that stays fresh about Brevi, though. It stays fresh with a little bit of a dash of like honeysuckle is what I get. Like honey in here is like a honeysuckle with that little droplet of nectar. It's like flower nectar is what you get in here. And then there's this walnut milk in here. Where you definitely get this feel of walnuts, which can be kind of dry like. Like when you smell walnuts, they have this dryness to them, right? Like this um, almost a suffocating kind of dryness. Like it sounds terrible, but that yet it's milky and creamy so that's like it does smell like if there were a milk a, i don't think there is there a walnut milk it's what it i would imagine it to be because it has that dryness yet creaminess all oh, my batteries going this one is more of a it's more of a white floral with all this new nuances like this one is definitely more mass appealing it's definitely unisex it's definitely the most floral fragrance like of these others where a lot of them are more gourmand this is the most floral of them and it opens with this beautiful delicate citrusy delicate sweetness white floral man this is good it's definitely a very fresh fragrance while still having this white floral citrusy well, the citrus kind of wanes away and then that deep dry down it's more of that walnut milk creamy kind of nuttiness to it i really like brevi brevi is so unique it's unique but mass appealing i find i think in a niche sort of way did i just make no sense whatsoever i don't know yeah i get that honey here but it's more like a honeysuckle I'm sorry, it's uh, tuberose is the floral in here. It's a very creamy tuberose. It's a very clean tuberose. It's not indolic at all. Indolic means it's very sharp. Like some florals have this sharpness to it or um, this animalic kind of tone to a floral that can sometimes smell like old lady, like I guess is what people would, that don't know what's creating that. I know I struggled when I first got into perfumery to try and identify what indolic was. I didn't know that was a word and that's how you describe that when there's a very sharp, unpleasant tone to a floral. I don't like indolic at all. I find it very like old home, like there's a an old dusty house to this floral. Like, I don't like that kind of tone at all. It's very animalic like. This is not that. It's very light and creamy and crisp kind of tuberose. Um, creamy, for sure. The kind of tuberose I actually really like. This one is good. And there's definitely this like honey milk. There's a little bit of tobacco in here, but I don't get a whole lot. It's a very clean kind of tobacco, more like a tobacco floral to it. Wait, this is a short video. But those are my newer favorite pistachio and nut products. There's more for sure. I didn't go through all of them, but these are the ones that are in my pistachio craze. And mind you, I've also been buying pistachio pudding. I have pistachio syrup for over ice cream. I have pistachio syrup from, is it Tirani? No, another name brand. Syrup for in like coffee, which believe it or not, tastes pretty darn good. Kind of like you can do hazelnut. I do pistachio. I have pistachio everything. I have pistachio like nut butter. I've got like so many pistachio for things right now. My mom found pistachio yogurt, gave that to me. I was like, I'm in pistachio craze right now. I've always liked pistachio, but now all these products are coming out that I'm loving it. So those are some of my favorites right now. Um, some of the newer ones in my collection. So I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.